Yo, what's up people? My name is Senachi and I'm back here in the world of Satisfactory. Alrighty, so I hope you've all been keeping very well. Alright, so it's been some time to build something and I'm getting itchy again to uh, get stuck into a build. And I was thinking of building something around this location uh, on the east side of the map in this kind of swampy area. It's got quite a good selection of resources around this area. Uh, we've got copper, iron, we've got cotarium, and we've got sulfur, we've got quartz just up there on that green bit. And more importantly, we've got a oil resource node uh, well just there. The only thing is though, even overclocked at max, it only pumps that 450 oil. It's not great. And I can use that for the plastic and rubber. And because I kind of run out of all any spare resources from my other factories, I kind of use them all up. So if I want to do another configurable factory at some stage, I'm going to need basically everything again from scratch, all the ingots, all the minerals, plastic and rubber. And yeah, so. I think I'll start something around this area. I haven't been doing too much lately because I'm kind of pacing myself um, because uh, there's not many good uh, locations left to build in this save game. And I do want to keep this save game kind of going um, all the way up until the full one part release. Because I think it'll be kind of cool to see the evolution of my building through the from update three a couple years ago, coming all the way to update five so far, and then hopefully eventually um, going to all the way up to one point I release. I mean, it really probably be wise to start a new save game. It'll be a lot more, or a lot less laggier for one. And I'll have a lot more usable space and locations and resources and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm gonna see if I can keep it going anyway. And also my bloody monitor broke a few weeks ago, which was a pain in the ass. And so I took the plunge and I went for, um, I was kind of recommended at work. We've got a few guys, one of the designers is using a, an ultra wide monitor. The boss uses an ultra wide monitor. I'm gonna take the plunge. Yeah, so I've got an ultra wide. So I had a problem rendering it on the last video I did in Valheim. I did a video and it kind of, I did it wrong basically in the, the rendering and there's loads of black borders even when you watched it full screen. So I think I fixed that now. I think I know how to, uh, to solve that, but we'll see. If I don't get it right and there's still loads of black borders around the edge, uh, have patience with me, I do apologize. Loads of good resources around here. All the ingots, plus maybe, or well, yeah, plus plastic and rubber, because I'm going to use the petroleum coke from the, the plastic and rubber production to do the steel and the aluminium. And uh, eventually I could do probably some configurable factory there in the water, so nice big open space. Although there is some really nice locations on the other side of the map that I do like, but um, it's going to be a pain in the ass getting a train all the way from here. And they're over here, the locations that I like. Some, is it over here? Somewhere there, anyway. Somewhere on this side, on the west. But we'll see, one step at a time. I'm kind of in two minds, actually, what kind of theme to build this, what kind of style. It's kind of close to the obelisk, Area 51 over there. So I'll maybe kind of go with that theme. But it's also close to the uh, the Mega Extractor. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. If I'm going to do some kind of drop factory. Um, and by drop factory, I mean something that has got like... Um, flying capabilities that kind of like comes from orbit and lands and it's kind of like a factory kind of like the um the thousand machine factory way way a distance over there but not like that but something to that idea kind of kind of we'll see yeah Alrighty. anyway enough talking let's get into this yes yes Alrighty. so i've made some progress here on the start and kind of started here at the front uh, i decided to start building like where the trees end because uh, it's kind of like um, not so many trees to cut down on that side. So I started uh, around this area. We've got the bauxite nodes right over there. we got it, and uh, iron and copper is there as well. Or was it on this side? And uh, the, it's right in the middle of all the resources that I'm going to need. So I think it was quite a practical location in that sense. And uh, I'm not quite sure what it looks like. Well, I don't know. I was trying to go for some kind of like drop factory. Like so it has the impression that it can kind of lift off and land. I mean, not like kind of wings and, you know, that kind of stuff, but something that could be like maybe released from a mothership. And it's like a drop factory that's dropped a bit like the space elevator. So when you build the space elevator, it kind of like comes down from orbit and like drops. Uh, I was trying to do something along those lines, kind of. And uh, it's not really ended up being that way but anyway so i'm gonna go with this and we'll see how it ends up and yeah alrighty, it's different you know me i always like to keep every build a little bit different a little bit unique it keeps it varied anyway all right let me continue and we'll see where this leads yes yes so made some more progress and um i think it looks more like a like a car <laughs> it looks more like a bloody car it looks more like a vehicle oh dear so it's basically ended up being nothing like i originally planned so I was, like i said i was trying to do like a a drop thingamajig and it looks nothing like a drop kind of thing 
at all. I guess it looks more like a... Actually, I'm not quite sure what it looks like. To be honest, it doesn't really look like anything. I definitely didn't manage to get that drop pod effect, but it's interesting nonetheless in a different kind of style. Yeah, I can live with that. I can live with that. It's getting there. It's the kind of thing that looks better from a distance. Yeah, definitely the further away you go and the better it looks. Okay, it's definitely looking better now. Yeah, it's starting to look better. All right, now even better. Okay, now it's looking really good. Yeah, it looks awesome. Absolutely awesome. Brilliant. Yeah, it's looking brilliant now. It looks absolutely brilliant now. Yeah, now it looks really good. That's it. Yeah, the further away you go, the brighter it looks. I mean, now it looks awesome. That's it, look at that. That's amazing. What a real day is, huh? Yeah, nice, nice. All righty. Okay, so the story continues. So I'll be working connecting up some of the miners and I've got the, the oil coming in now. And on this side, we've got the Caterium. What is that? This iron. And I'll put a train station in because I'm thinking eventually what's going to happen is we're going to have a train going off in one of these two directions uh, to pick up. Because I need to do another factory to do the quartz and um, well, the silica, all the minerals basically, limestone quartz and uh, silica. And the sulfur's over there somewhere as well, not far. So once I have all of those, I have all the basic raw materials that I need to do a configurable factory, which I'll probably do in the water there started to connect the machines uh the miners sorry so we've got the the box site coming in there as well on the arms underneath as well we've got the water as well being pumped up but i started working on the inside as well i want something to, in this factory to be configurable i've got to have something that's configurable something to make it a little bit more interactive so what i'm going to try and do in this factory is use actually before that i was um kind of thinking to use the other recipes to do plastic and rubber because there's only 450 oil available from that resource well it's not a lot so it's not going to do a lot of plastic and rubber and so what i was thinking is maybe do the alternative recipes and um, so those would be uh, let's go to the uh, refinery just put one down there for now so i was thinking possibly do the alternative polymer resin and then with the resin add water to use these residual plastic and rubber and then use recycled plastic and rubber so you kind of double the output so it would give you a lot more plastic and rubber for the oil i know the best recipe um or the most efficient is using diluted packaged fuel but it's a bulky build and needs a lot of space i didn't kind of plan the space very well to be honest considering how much i'm trying to do in this little space on my other configurable factories i've always found out that out of plastic and rubber i usually end up needing more rubber usually it does depend of course what you're producing but on my other configurable factories what i would have liked is if i was able to actually configure and manipulate the resource production in the plastic and rubber stage and so what i'm going to try and do here is i'm going to have this valve where it's going to allow me to send more oil towards the uh the refineries doing rubber to produce more rubber or i can choose to send more oil to the plastic to the refineries in plastic and I can distribute the oil accordingly between um, these two outputs so I might want 75% of the oil going towards rubber production and 25 grains of plastic for example and I can change it as I need it but after looking into it two problems arose with that if for example I put all the oil towards rubber production then I have to have enough refineries that, that can obviously um produce that oil into rubber so you kind of have to make more refineries than you need depending on how you distribute the oil and another problem was the rubber refineries produce more heavy oil residue as a byproduct compared to the plastic ones the plastic does 10 per minute whereas the rubber does 20 per minute so i had to factor that in so for example if i send more oil towards rubber production i'm going to get more heavy oil residue which in turn will allow me to produce more petroleum coke which in turn will allow me to produce more aluminium and um steel because i'm going to use the petroleum coke recipes uh for the aluminium production and also for the for the steel production so it really did kind of make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be but you know me i do like complicated builds so yeah i'm using this recipe uh, for steel ingots with the petroleum coke uh, as i mentioned the, the petroleum coke is going to be variable depending on how i distribute the oil towards either plastic or rubber but the good thing is i always find that i'm short of rubber mainly so i'm going to produce more rubber i'm going to send more oil towards rubber refineries therefore that would give me more heavy oil residue as a byproduct therefore giving me more petroleum coke and therefore i should be absolutely fine with the steel as well because there's a lot of variables there you have to factor in all those variables in your pipe work and conveyor work and you know me i like to have something that's interactive and a little bit configurable and I haven't really done much with configurable liquids and uh, customizable uh, machineries that require uh, fluids. I did something very briefly before with water a long time ago because of the variable um, aspect of this build. 
It's gonna make it a little bit more complicated, but I think I've worked it out correct in terms of the machine. So now I've just got to do the conveyor work and the um, and the pipe work as well, of course. Gotta hope this works, ideal. Yeah, and I've also put a lot of um, clippings. So I've done a lot of these uh, columns kind of clipping through the machines, as you can see, and uh, the train station on this side. And then, yeah, alrighty, let's continue. Alrighty, so I've made some good progress. And I'm coming close to actually finishing. So, uh, so this is the front, and um, I've just got the hypertube leading to the entrance, so you can get in and out. But I've got this empty space at the front where the front circle is. I'm not sure what to do with that space yet, so I'll just leave it empty, and we'll see. So as we come in, we've got this uh, little workbench area, and here we've got the controls for the mains power switch and for some light control panels. Uh, just some random decorations and some lights. I've set up most of the machines now. Well, all of the machines and all the conveyor work and the pipe work and I've left it running for a while and it seems to be running okay surprisingly as I mentioned earlier it was a little bit of a challenge trying to set up the the variable aspect of this build in terms of the uh, distribution of the oil and I ended up using the basic recipe for plastic and rubber which is the one that just basically takes it straight from oil and gives you heavy oil residue as a byproduct if I had more space I would have done the other recipes one of the other two uh, alternate production of plastic and rubber which would have given me more plastic and rubber but it's fine it doesn't matter uh, this will end up being well this will end up feeding a small configurable factory small to medium size it won't be anything massive as you can see we've got the iron on the left and I'm not going to use much iron in my configurable factories I'm just going to use it mainly for iron plates to make reinforced plates but most of the stuff I need mainly copper we've got the deuterium then we've got the steel and then we've got aluminium and those are the scrap for the aluminium and this is the rubber production and that's the petroleum coke here we've got the variable aspect as i mentioned so these are the valves that control the oil that i can either send towards the refineries doing plastic or the refineries doing rubber or a mixture of both and we can distribute that oil accordingly uh, to how we want to distribute towards plastic or rubber for example here i've got all of the um We've got 450 oil uh, being sent to the, the right pipe, which is going towards the refineries that are producing uh, rubber. And I've kind of done that just to uh, stress test the, the belt work and the pipe work because the oil obviously is going to have a lot more of an output of heavy oil residue and coke. So, but now that I've tested it more realistically, what I'd probably do is, yeah, I'll probably do uh, 280, yeah, 280 towards. Um, the rubber and 170 towards the uh, plastic production so if we keep an eye on these two belts now just give it a, a minute or two for the oil to start heading towards the uh, the refineries doing the um and the plastic but as you can see the plastic is uh now starting to come through as well because i've started to send uh, 170 oil onto this uh, pipe which goes towards the refineries that are going to do the plastic so the distribution of rubber and plastic will change accordingly and it seems to work just fine though so this has been probably the first attempt that i've done in setting up a factory with configurable fluid and in this case configurable oil production of course with plastic and rubber and it's worked out all right actually it's not too bad not too bad at all and actually using the valves is kind of cool because you can uh, put a very specific number and ratio to the, the different outputs and because you can put a very specific number you can get a very well you can affect the outcome of production a lot more accurately than uh, using kind of splitters and mergers because uh, I mean you can do the same with splitters and mergers I guess but it's a lot more of a bulky setup but yeah it's kind of actually pleasantly uh, been simple to set up the only part that was a little bit more complicated as I mentioned is the variable setup you had to kind of cater for that and now that I've done that part I was actually thinking I should have done the same uh, for the, the iron and the copper so what I've done is I've used this recipe for iron and copper uh, the alternate copper alloy ingot using both copper and iron ore and again the same for the iron I've used this recipe iron alloy ingot using again iron and copper so because that they're both ingots production is both using only iron and copper ore it would have been quite simple to um, configure that in a way to have it you can configure it with a splitter to send more for example copper to one set of the uh, foundries or another therefore giving you more copper or more iron ingots but after thinking about it some more i was thinking 
I'm always short of copper compared to iron. I, I always need a lot more copper ingots. I usually try and steer away from recipes using iron rods, iron plates and screws. Although I do use some, but um, so yeah. I generally found that I've used recipes that um, use more copper stuff and I can use steel to produce iron rods as well. And um, what's it called? You can even use steel to produce iron plates with uh, plastic, I think it is. And what's the other one that you use are iron screws? Yeah, you can produce like, loads of screws with steel ingots as well. So that's not a problem. So I've just fixed it to send more of the copper towards the uh, the foundries that are doing the copper alloy um, recipe. That's basically it. So most of the factory is complete, I think. It would have been a lot better if I had a coal uh, node that was local. There's no coal around here for quite a while. And the nearest coal nodes, I'm using them all. So. Uh, if I had a spare coal node, I would have used uh, coal to do steel instead of petroleum coke, which would have made the variable a little bit less, well, a little bit less variable in that sense. Um, and also, for example, I could have used the coal to do the aluminium as well. I didn't have access to any coal nearby, so I was kind of forced to use the um, and the petroleum coke recipes on this as well. But yeah, not too bad, not too bad at all. Uh, interesting uh, little factory, unusual. God, I've got some weird stuff. Yeah, anyway, so um, that will be the, the main feed for my configurable factory that I'll do, I don't know, sometime soon. I'm not gonna rush it, as I said. Uh, I don't know why, but this uh, it looks like a, a car to me for some reason. You know what it is? I think it's the, um, it's kind of like in the, it's got the proportion of a car, and as in you got that like, the lower front end, and like something that looks well kind of vaguely resembles a grill and then you've got these parts which kind of resemble the muscular wheel arch at the front and the back where the train is at the back there i guess it kind of does resemble very vaguely the shape of a car i guess it could be a spaceship as well odd build man odd build anyway but yeah i was looking around and um later on when i do the configurable factory uh no rush because like i said i'm trying to pace it and uh there's, there's a, I guess there's quite a bit of time until the next patches, uh, the next update will come out, update six and seven, whatever. Uh, we've got a resource well there for nitrogen gas, which is cool. And just on the other side, we've got um, the quartz and the sulfur. So that's basically everything I'm going to need for a configurable factory. And I was thinking, as I mentioned, to build the configurable factory in that big open water. But as I was looking, I saw this area here and um, you know what, this could be quite an interesting area for something that's going to be, I guess, like Eden and Area 51, as in that you've got lots of very odd shaped nooks and crannies and, and cliffs and rock faces and uh, different kind of levels as well. This could actually be quite an interesting area, I'm thinking, for a factory. And because the resources there, they're not a lot, so it's not going to be a big customizable configurable factory this might actually end up being an okay space to use um, but because we've got the nitrogen gas right there together with um well just the nitrogen gas basically yeah you know what i think it could be quite cool actually the different levels and odd shape what's that hold on hold on what's this oh, oh it's nothing it just goes down to the bottom of the world i think okay but yeah, it's got some really unusual, like, um, it's got even got a little tunnel here as well. That could make for an interesting little build, I think. Hold on, where does this go? This just goes to the bottom of the world, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it just goes to nothing. Okay. Yeah, but still, not too bad. I much you like it. Oh, hold on, hold on. What's this? Hold on a second. Hold, hold on a bloody second. Oh, hello. What's this? Oh, hold on, is this... Ah, oh, Sam, oh, right, I thought that was coal. I was about to say, I'm, I'm sure I checked for coal and I couldn't find any. Okay, but yeah, that's kind of close to the uh, the factory, nice. Okay, that's a possibility, that. Hold on, hold on a bloody second, what's this? Oh, I like it. Oh, hold on, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? Okay, this is nice. I really like this area. Oh, this is, okay. Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna build here. Okay, but where the hell am I now? Aha! Okay, that's interesting. This would be unusual. You know what, I haven't seen anything. Where was those plants? Hold on a second. Where was that plant? Oh, I'm lost. I've lost it now. What was it? Was it down here? 
No, it's up here. I've lost it. Where the bloody hell was it now? Okay, now. Here we go. Is that the one? No. Uh, I'm going mad. I'm sure it was here. Here we go. I've never seen that before in the whole map. Can you? No. Anyway, I really like this cave. Yeah, I think this will make for an awesome little build. You kind of take advantage of it, maybe. It is. It is. Anyway, first part of the configurable factory is done. Uh, I'm very, very unusual. Another unusual uh, build. Next part, I'll probably do the, the courts, which is just on that green bit there where those big trees are. Actually, I might bring that courts, that raw courts, and underneath the and the floor here, we've got a little bit of space. Maybe let's have a look. I've got enough space here to put a few more machines for uh, to do the courts. That would be handy. Uh, yeah, maybe we could put a bit of overclocking as well. I could prob possibly put some of the machines. Uh, not much space really. Yeah, I could put a few there, I guess. Yeah, possible. I actually, might actually bring the courts and do it all here together. Where's the bloody way out? Hold on a second. Where's the bloody way out? What was that one I deleted? I'm lost now. There we go. Anyway, part one of the um, configurable factory uh, is complete. And eventually, as I said, uh, the next stage will be the courts, which I might do in, inside there, as I said. And then after that, sometime, not anytime soon probably, but uh, do a configurable factory either on the water there, or actually that unusual area just uh, where the nitrogen gas was, where you've got different kind of ledges and uh, kind of narrow canyons. And it makes for quite interesting builds, I think, usually. And you can kind of incorporate that nature aspect quite well as well. But yeah, anyway, I think I'm going to leave it there, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, thank you for watching and maybe I'll catch you again soon.